the end of the day. But uh, anyway, we've always been there in June. We've never been there in the, in the winter months. Hey, Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG here. We're going to have a little talk with KM6GUE as part of the Field Day 2020 in Retrospect series. I've known Jim for a few years and uh, uh, really a fun guy to talk to and has some really great ideas about Field Day. Anyway, if you have a chance, go down there and click on the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And be sure to like the video if you think it was good. With that, let's get on to Jim. Well, hi, everybody. It's Stu, AG6AG, and I'm fortunate enough to be joined by Jim, uh, KM6GUE today. And uh, we're going to discuss Field Day 2020, which was a highly unusual field day, I think, for everybody. Uh, but uh, first off, Jim, thank you so much for sp uh, spending the time to talk to me today. Oh, you're welcome, Stu, anytime. I really appreciate it. So how long have you been a licensed amateur? You would ask that question. Uh, what has it been, three years, four years? That's probably, is it four? I think it's four, isn't yeah, it? Time creeps up on me. You know, I can look it up. I have this amazing thing it's called the... It's right here on my wall. <laughs> Four years. Four years. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it has been four years. Look at that. Um, all right. And what class do you currently hold? I hold a general. All right. Great. Great. Uh, let's see. And uh, was this your first field day? I already know the answer to that. Yeah, you know the answer to that. This is, this is actually my third, yeah, third field day. Uh, I missed one the year before. I missed that because I didn't put it on my calendar and my wife planned something. So that messed that up. But yeah, this is my third one uh, that I've actually participated in. All right. So in uh, looking back at uh, the uh, third one, uh, the, the other two that you participated in versus this one, did this one meet the expectations of field day for you? Yes, I think it did. And I mean, it was different, but I think because of the way we handled it um, with the Zoom meetings and the VHF initiative and uh, that sort of thing. And I mean, I, when I was on the radio, I had Zoom going. So it was just like I was there with the other guys. Yeah, it was rather interesting this year for uh, uh, for the folks that, out there that don't know, we did a 26-hour Zoom meeting during field day here in Ventura County, as well as a 24-hour uh, long uh, linked repeater net throughout the entire county. Um, we did uh, online, score, uh, online contest score.com and dynamically uh, in real time, uploaded real time scores so everybody in Ventura County could see where they stood, uh, as well as uh, in their clubs, see what their position was. Uh, let's see, we had uh, uh, all sorts of uh, Elmer events going on where you had Elmers there to ask, uh, answer questions uh, to new hams and even a lot of the older hams that were trying to figure out what class and category they were under. That was, that was interesting. And we also had what was called the BHF initiative, uh, which was uh, the uh, use of having people operate base station VHF. So VHF only operators would have someone to call CQ to locally in the county. Did I kind of sum that up about right? Yep, that's pretty good, Stu. Not bad. It's just like, like, I guess this isn't my first rodeo, but <laughs> what? <laughs> Of, of all those programs, you mentioned the Zoom meeting. Um, what all did you take advantage of uh, this year that made, made this year's field day work better for you? Well, you know, the difference was this year was I used my own equipment, which I had not ever done really that before on anything like this. I mean, I've used it for, you know, the ACS and ARES uh, events that we have, but you know, my HF rig, I, you know, mostly used it for uh, FT8. I never, hardly ever use it for voice. 
uh, has to do with the tendons in the attic and not working too great, up, you know, mostly. Uh, but then the, um, like you said, we had the, uh, the Bozo repeater going. I actually uh, stood my watch on that for a couple hours and helped a couple people out. Um, and then I also was on the VHF, which I've not, you know, on field day, I've not done that. I usually was on 20 meters on field day. So um, you did, uh, how many bands did you cover on field day? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I would say generally three. I think the two meter, uh, 20 and 40. All right. All right. And did you run any digital this year or was it all phone? Actually, it was mostly digital, digital and VHF. Awesome, awesome. And um, you, obviously, uh, I'm sure you turned your score in and everything else. What was your class in category? I was a uh, 2D. Okay, 2 Delta. All right, very good, very good. And digital, you say you ran digital. Uh, was it mostly FT8 or are you doing it was, any it was all FT8. All FT8? All right, all right. Now, compared to previous years, you know, you mentioned an interesting point. That was something that I found that was amazing, was the fact that I got to work all these bands. I mean, usually on field day, you're like, all right, you know, you're band captain, or you're working 40-meter uh, phone, or you're working 40-meter digital, or you're working, oh, you're over there at 20-meter CW, which we, they'd never do for me, because I, I can't do CW. I've got a 10 ear, But... Um, hey, this year we got to do whatever we wanted to do. Um, how many, if you know off the top of your head, I don't want you to go looking it up or anything, but how many cues of your total cues uh, were uh, VHF? I think it was 11. Okay, all right. And and 29. Was there, a, was there a lot of VHF activity uh, up there? Uh, here in Santa Paula, no. Um, most of my contacts were like Ventura. I could hear some of the further away, you know, out in Ox Oxnard, Camarillo. Uh, but it was really hard to contact them from here in Santa Paula. Okay. All right. And uh, in, uh, in Santa Paula, did you have, uh, have a few uh, VHF operators that participated out there? I did not hear any. Well, I shouldn't say that. I did talk to Rick. Okay. Oh. You know, yeah. Yeah, I think that was the only one that I talked to out here in San Paulo. Right, right. And uh, all right. And uh, did you do any, uh, I, I think you said it was almost all uh, digital on uh, HF. Did you do any phone HF at all? No phone HF at all. No phone HF. All right. All right. Um, and uh, how do you think you did? I did terrible. <laughs> 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 and, and 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 you know we talked about that. The, right. It was, had to do with my antenna. I know that you guys heard you guys talk about. Oh wow, look at all those guys out there. And I'm going, why well, guys? Where? Where are they? And it, because I run my antenna, my attic. I wasn't hearing them. So on Saturday or Sunday morning, I took a, a, my buddy stick and put it out in the front yard and ran a, a line out there to it. And all of a sudden, I saw all these people out there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So Sunday was your big day. Yeah, actually, that was when I made most of the contact. With yeah, also. yeah. So, and, uh, you know, uh, I, I believe you are trying to change your configuration at the house a little bit. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the powers that be uh, oblige, you can. Yeah, so why does not like antennas? She's kind of breaking down on that a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, but what I've done is I've got the, the little octopus thing with the old, put four different bands on there. And then when I'm ready to work, I go out, set it up in the front yard and put it up 18 foot in the air with the guy lines all tied down. So that'll drive her nuts and maybe she'll change her mind. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he actually came home one day. He says, well, I was looking into this on how to disguise an antenna. And she wants to put one out on the front in the corner where there's this kind of wispy tree looking thing that we have and she wants to hide it in there. I said, well, you realize I'm like, gonna have to have a mass that goes up probably 20 feet and then another 23 foot for the antenna that's vertical going up. That ain't gonna hide it. 
<laughs> well, hiding something, you know, if you ever drive down, we're, we're here in Southern California, so if you ever drive down on the 405 freeway, you see all the artificial uh, uh, cellular network trees that are out there on the side of the freeway. There are these, these giant antenna farms that are painted green. It's the most ridiculous thing, and like they tape leaves on them, right? So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, good luck with that. So, based on your experience in 2020, and uh, you know, this will be the uh, uh, COVID 19 field day for sure. Uh, what of the things that uh, we did countywide? When I say we, you know, the, there uh, uh, was an organization of us that got together that were not tied to any clubs, at least based on our efforts to do this, that kind of said to all the clubs, let's all get together, let's all do something together. Uh, amazing that we were able to pull it off, but we did. And, uh, you know, what of the things that we did in 2020 do you think can carry forward into next field day if you know gosh if this <laughs> covid thing ever ends you know or at right. least takes our break long enough for us to get back to some form of normality well you know the vhf initiative getting the, the technicians really involved in that uh actually i enjoyed it i mean like i said i, I made 11 cues but i would only jump in i wasn't on it constantly you know i I actually didn't even have it on speaker most of the time. I had it on um, headset sets. So, you know, sometimes I'd hear something on a headset, I'd jump on and, you know, make a contact real quick. And I think, you know, get, that helped get a lot of technicians involved and also get us involved with technicians. I mean, I really enjoyed that. Um, the the uh, score online was a real good thing. That was fun to watch that because I had my screen was half and half, score online, and the other was a Zoom meeting. <laughs> now that's cool. That's yeah, cool. and so that was fun to watch that, even though my score didn't go up. I think, <laughs> you know, after talking to you and a few others, that uh, I think I'll do a lot better, and plus with the antennas, you know, changing the antenna, especially. Uh, but I think the VHF thing would be good. I think after this year, because it was something that Everything was new. I mean, everything we did was new this year. So yeah. they were kind of forced into it. And a lot of the old guys liked it. You know what? And I think the BHF initiative actually was the success story for us. You know, I believe that truthfully. Um, and, uh, but, you know, um, we had a lot of good things going, you know, what made the VHF initiative possible were those old farts like you and me, not to call us old farts, there are <laughs> any older farts out there and some younger farts, but uh, it was us who sat and listened for these, these folks that are out there on nothing more than an HP on five watts, right. calling CQ and answering those calls and giving them those contacts, right? I mean, um, it, and interestingly enough, we talk about the VHF initiative, and of course, there was the Terry Graves Memorial uh, Contest, right? Field Day event. Um, and uh, KM6TXE actually took the HT contest with 42 QSOs, okay? She ran battery the entire time on a single friggin' battery. They never charged the battery. She qualified for all the points. I don't know. Where did she go to do that? Was she at home? Or? Her backyard, and she had a J-pole that she oh, okay. borrowed from uh, W6KME. Okay. And wow, you know, and, and to be perfectly fair, her and her husband used the same call time sign. They were two Echo, right? Operating from their back hour as uh, QRP. And you know what? It was great. She had a great time. We interviewed her. Wendy, uh, WB6ADC, took second in the HT class, right? Mm -hmm. And she had a great time. You had mobile operators out there. So here I am being a good ham radio operator. <laughs> I turned my log in to uh, Keith, who was putting on the Terry Graves Memorial. And I said, here, use this as a check log, 
okay? I don't want to enter, just use this as a check block. And what does he do? He produces me as the winner of the base station class. I saw that. <laughs> and I'm going, you can't do this. I can do whatever I want. It's my contest. That's right, by God. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but the person that really should have got that, I think, was uh, KM6 RSS with 31. I think he should have gotten it. I shouldn't, you know, I was part of the planning of this thing. It's kind of like I feel bad that I participated. Uh, they even had a boat anchor class, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> what is, I didn't ever, what was, what is qualified as a boat anchor? Um, anything that had tubes, I think, oh, is what okay. the final classification was, you know. Um, and um, I don't know if he held to that. I know uh, KK6YAM brought out an old tube radio <laughs> he won with two QSOs <laughs> but he got two QSOs you know so yeah. um and that was a lot of fun and I uh I think doing that uh I'm in 100% agreement I think we need to do that next field day figure out a way to make that happen well, and the other thing was that I, I don't think I mentioned it was the uh having the people on a repeater to answer any questions 24 hours a day I mean, even if they couldn't answer it, we had a list of people we could contact who get on there. And that's, I mean, helped a lot of people. The old guys, new guys, both. You know what amazes me about that too is that we'd never done it before. That's true. <laughs> we'd never done it before. And um, it just seems so obvious, you know. The question and answer, what, what was that called? Agony ants on the Oh, yes. Wednesday at 3 p.m., tune into this Zoom meeting for the Agony Ants, which I guess is some sort of like uh, British version of uh, Dear Abby. Oh, I, I figured it was something like that since yeah. Andy was doing it. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, when I went on, you know, I got on a couple of those, and I was surprised at the number of older hams, I meaning people have been hams for a while that were on there. Versus the you know the newer technician guys that had you know had a lot of experience. Then they, well, and... well, okay, but field day, you know I hate to say this because you know um, Ventura County Amateur Radio Society, um, Canal Valley Amateur Radio Club, Ventura County Amateur Radio Club, we go off in our little cliques you know for field day and we go and we get all together and, and somebody <laughs> one person in the club figures all this stuff out, decides what the category and class is of our, you know, uh, uh, alpha base station, you know, wherever that may be, whether it's at the Reagan Library or uh, Maple Elementary or, my gosh, at uh, Oxnard College. Sometimes they do it down there at the uh, fireman's training uh, station down by the airport. Um, but one person usually decides, okay, this is who's going to operate. These are the rules. They're the authority for that club effort. They calculate all the scores. They put it all together, figure out what class. All that gets shipped off to ARL in a giant upload package, uh, which it, that's usually Rick um, in uh, NQ6X now, used to be uh, um, uh, AB, uh, AG6AY, but anyway. Uh, and that was what I saw as the majority of the questions was, what am I supposed to be? I'm going to be running in my shack <laughs> with, a, with my monkey hanging an antenna from the side of my house. So am I a E? Am I a A? Well, how are you going to power it? I have several turnips on roller skates that were generating <laughs> power. <laughs> Seriously, I think we heard it all. Yeah. But it was just, it was interesting. Those were what I saw to be the majority of the questions. I mean, of course, we got the, hey, I'm trying to get this antenna to work or, uh, you know, that. But the other questions were, you know, I'm going to be working off battery power. But what if I charge the batteries on the main while I'm working? Well, you can't do that. You right. need to charge them off of, uh, if you charge them off of solar, then, then you. That, that's what made me go to D instead of E because 
the batteries, I actually have two batteries down here that are connected to my radio at all times, but they weren't going to last the whole thing. Sure. Even well, with the solar panel. It was funny you should say that because, you know, on the other side of the coin, uh, I was going to run my generator. I'd already talked to my neighbors. I said, this is once a year. I promise I'm going to turn it off at midnight. I'm going to fire it back up because I've got battery too. So if I got up at four in the morning, I could run off battery for a couple hours right. and then fire the generator up, you know, at seven in the morning while they're complaining that they have to go to church or whatever. But um, when they made it so a D could talk to a D, right? you know, and get points, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to annoy my neighbors. I, you know, I've ran all the tests. I know the generator powers my, my shack. I mean, my generator powered everything, the computer, the, you know, um, heck, if I wanted to run uh, over, uh, if I wanted to run the, uh, at high power, I could have, because the generator would powered my friggin' amp as well. So, <laughs> I, you know, I didn't run an amp because, you know, it's field day. Let's, let's be fair about this. But, uh, you know, I was able to... Uh, run 50 watts is, uh, on uh, PSK31 without, or uh, on uh, FT8. I did some PSK31. I did some RIDI. So I kind of covered the gamut, did a lot of foam. So I had a good time. It was a real good time for me because I got to play on all the bands. You know, even with a few contacts that I had, I, I, I operated for 17 hours. Wow, okay. And I mean, I stuck with it. I figured, you know what? That's what I plan to do. I'm going to stick with it. And actually, the 17 hours flew because I was listening to, you know, the, the VHF over here, the HF here, the Zoom meeting, what was going on there. I actually stayed interested the whole time, and it just flew by. Well, and God, just think what it's going to be like maybe next year, maybe the year after when we get uh, some of the solar cycle stuff happening. Yes. You know, and we actually get some propagation, which we, you know, I was going to ask you that question, you know, uh, um, from a historical standpoint, uh, did you feel that the propagation this year hurt us? And I know that's a hard statement to make, but you've been a ham, you know, I've only been a ham for five years, so I've seen it get a little worse, you know, but. Well, I didn't, you know, I've only been, like I said, I've only been a ham for four years. Um I had my technician for a year, so and I didn't really get into hand, do any HF until for the last two years. So okay. I'm at the yeah. bottom of that solar cycle that right. I've seen. So right. all I've seen is it's like crap now. Well, but like I said, since I've switched those other antennas, uh, I still haven't got that guy in Hawaii yet. I keep <laughs> Hawaii on FT8, and I try to get him. Oh, I, have, I mean, I've been going Cuba. Brazil, you know, down in the South of right. America. Right. Um, so I've been getting quite a bit. Yeah, it, it, well, you know, and it's funny because you have moments and I hear people tell me about, oh yeah, you know, you, you don't know, you don't know, you know, how this, you don't know how this is, you know, this is really bad. You don't know how good it's going to be and all this. And it's kind of like going, yeah, all right. Sure. <laughs> I can't well, we wait. See, we really don't know any difference, see? Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All in all, though, it sounds like you had a good time. So oh, yeah. that's good. That's good. I said um, 17 hours. It flew very quickly. Well, very good. All right. Well, I think we're going to wind it up. Thank you so much, Jim, for sharing uh, your time. You're welcome. And uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you again on uh, another event. 73. All right, 73, Stu. Boy, it was sure fun talking to Jim. And he is one of the guys that is kind of a go-to guy for me when I need somebody to go out there and help with a project. So I'm glad that we could get his input. Anyway, great to see you out there. I want to thank you very much and bid 73 to you all. This is Stu, AG6AG, hoping to hear you on the air.